Hello there everybody, guys and gals, it's Shiny Sparky 14 bringing you a very special video today. That's right, it's a tutorial. Now, I don't usually do tutorials, I'm more into Let's Plays, but I figured, you know, since this is, it's kind of related to, you know, YouTube in a way, then I'll go ahead and show that. So, the way that you do that is, first you actually want to download the app. There's two ways to do that. The first way is by going here to the Mac App Store, typing in Acorn, finding it right here, Acorn for the Image Editor for Humans, and downloading it. It costs $49.99 US dollars, which is actually a pretty good amount compared to other more expensive ones like, let's say, Adobe Photoshop. Sure, it's not as good, but it's not bad either. The other way you can do it is by going to the Flying Meat Store. That's right, that's how it's called. It's pretty weird at first, that's what I thought, but yeah, you can get it from there too, you know, that's their website the ones who made Acorn. Now once you download it and you know, install it, drag it to the apps folder and then you can just put it on the dock right here. It's on the dock. You click on it and you'll have these options. Now I just I already have a bunch of images here, just don't look at that. Uh, new image, that's what we're gonna do. So you can start by going for a preset, you know, 800 by 400 and yeah, all the way down here. But you can choose a custom, like let's say, okay I'll just leave it at 700 by 700. You can choose pixels, inches, or centimeters. I just like to use pixels. It's really easy. If you use pixels, you got to use the right resolution. 72 pixels per inch is the default, and I always keep it at that. You can also choose a background or no background, white, black, or transparent. I'll just keep it at white for now. And there you go. Okay, once it's made, there are several things you can do. First off, you can make the screen, you know, smaller bigger whatever you can also zoom in and zoom out by going up here to view zoom in or view zoom out you know a faster way to do it is holding the command and then pressing minus or plus however many times that's a good size for now and now let's actually import something the way that you import is go to file down to add images and here you know you just see all, all of your pictures and stuff that you have Let's just go on with this picture. So first off, you want to go to your move tool, the top left corner. That of course allows you to select objects and move them around. Images, I should say. Other tools that you can do are, well, let's say the crop. This is the crop right here, right under the move. For a crop, you want to select a certain portion. Then you want to go ahead and, you know, just like that. You can then move it by clicking the middle you can continue to resize it if you hold down the shift it'll turn into wait okay I actually have to start this so if you hold down the shift it'll turn into the same um, image that you start out with but for example let's say you press return or enter there you go it cuts the entire image to that size now if we go ahead and undo it and we start off by actually cropping, a, let's say, a perfect square. Now we got a perfect square because we started with the perfect square. See that? Go like that. Enter, and there you go. We can still move around everything else, you know, however we want, just like that. Let's go ahead and undo it. Not like that. Okay, twice, sorry. Other things you can do are, well, let's say, the selection tool. Make sure to have the right layer selected. I will talk more about layers much later. I'm going to be splitting it into different parts, these videos. But for now, I'll just go ahead and select the right layer. Then you want to select a good amount, like let's say that. Go ahead and press to delete, and it'll delete whatever you selected. Now, if you go back up to undo, let's say move this down, you can actually move whatever you select wherever you want, you know? Let's go ahead and undo that again, twice. I should be using Command Z. I'll be doing that from now on. It's a lot faster. Now, to actually get rid of this, you know, rectangle that you made, you want to go over here to Select Clear Selection. When you do that, the selection goes away. As far as other selection tools, here's a circle one. You can go ahead and you know make an oval, but if you hold down the Shift key, you can make a perfect circle. With the rectangle tool, if you hold down the Shift key, you can make a perfect square. I forgot to mention that. And then, you know, move it around. That's going to take off part of his head. There you go. Just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and undo it. And go up here. Clear selection. Other things that you can select are... 
Well, this is actually the... Oh, right, right, it's not the polygon tool, I'm sorry about that. This is the free, uh, it's called lasso tool in most places, I mean, most people are familiar with knowing it as a lasso tool, but in here it's the free select tool, you know, same thing. Simply, you know, you get whatever you want, you know, drag it however you want, like that. And then close it. Press delete, and well, you delete whatever's in there. But if you want to go, I'll go ahead and um, clear the selection. If you want to select, you know, let's say from here and go perfect right here in his head, you know, however you want it, and then do whatever over here, go ahead and delete, and then, you know, it'll delete that part. We'll go ahead and undo it, clear the selection, and now for the last select tool is, this is the polygon select tool. Is that, is that the actual name? Okay, well, you know, similar. Polygon select tool is that you click on one spot, you select another region, like let's say down or like right here. Then you want to come over here and you know just keep selecting parts. This is just a click and move, click and move, click and move. It's that simple. Click and move. Until you eventually, you know, once you get to the end, you want to double click it to close it. And there you go. Go ahead and delete, and of course it'll delete the parts that you selected. Now we're gonna undo it one more time. Okay. Now, as far as other things, I'm going to go ahead and go back over here, move this to the corner. Let's talk about the shape tools for a bit. Now, shape tools, we'll go ahead and start with the rectangle tool. For shape tools, you want to come this thing right over here, vector shapes. Start out by drawing a rectangle. Now, of course, the fill is white right now. Maybe that wasn't such a good example to do, but, <laughs> you know, there it is. But... We want to come over here, you know, select, let's say, uh, green, and the second one we'll go ahead and do orange. Now, over here, the one on the bottom right is always the fill color of any shape that you draw, and the one on the top left is the stroke color. Now, it doesn't have the stroke, which is why you don't see a green color. The way that you fix the stroke is by coming over here, right here in the stroke. You want to check mark it. It is check mark right now, but it's, the stroke is at zero. That's the problem. If we select it and go to, let's say, two, it brings up a stroke. As you can see, now there's a very small light green stroke. Change it to five. Should make it a bit thicker. I'm not really sure if it did. <coughs> but other stuff you can do, you can go ahead and check the fill, and it'll take out the fill. It'll just leave the, you know, the frame, the stroke. And you can also do corner radius. Now, corner radius is kind of a, it's a, well, I'll just go ahead and show it. If you go ahead and do 5, or 10, I should say, you can see that it's not as sharp on the edges. If you keep on doing it, let's say 20, maybe that already reached its maximum, but I'll go ahead and select it. There you go. See that? It keeps making it more roundish in a way. It's not a circle, of course, or an oval, but it's not a perfect rectangle anymore. That's what the corner radius is. You can of course always just, you know, uncheck mark them and it doesn't matter what number you have over here, they're going to turn off. So that's the rectangle select. Now let's go ahead and go with a circle. For a circle, you know, you drag it, hold the shift key to make a perfect circle. Let's go ahead and, you know, put that there. And we will go ahead and we have to select it. Come down here and I'll make it red. I'll also give it a stroke and say um, how about blue. Now the stroke is not on once again you gotta check mark it and give it a stroke. There you go that's a nice stroke. See and you can just keep doing that. For other shapes let's say the star tool this one's a bit more complicated. Um, this one if you hold down the well, I don't think the ship really helps in here, but if you hold on the shift key, it kind of just makes it not move as much because, you know, it just, it's hard to explain that part, but right now I'm holding on the shift key and it's only going down one corner or it's going to go down other corners. If you don't hold it though, you can just move it freely wherever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, leave it something like that. And again, select it. Come down here, give it a brown color, give it a stroke of, let's say, black. And there, that's good. Now, 
For the stars, there's actually a bit more options. What you can do is actually come down to, let's see if I can remember where that is. There is actually a way to change, oh, here it is, right here. You can change the number the number of uh, sides on the star by going down there to that menu. What was it called again? Quick configuration popover. And here's the star points. Let's go ahead and change it to six. And you can see, there you go. Now there's a six-sided star. We can go to seven, and you know, you can go to 15. We can go down to uh, three, that's gonna be a triangle, yeah. Four, you get the idea. So that's pretty much how you change the star points. And then we have this one over here, which is a line shape. This one is really simple, I mean, come on. It's a line, hold down the shift key to make a perfect, you know, it'll go up to perfect vertical, diagonal, perfect horizontal, diagonal, you know, eight different places that you can go to. Put a line there. Now the thickness of the line is dependent on the stroke. You know, if you put a 10 stroke, it's gonna be really thick, whereas if you put one, it's gonna be really thin. You can, of course, change the color of the stroke. Once again, there you go. Let's go ahead and put it like at six. How about that? And there's a line tool right there. And as far as the last tool goes, this one right here is called the Bezier Pen Tool. This one is a lot more complicated. It's kind of like the, the this one right over here, the Polygon Select Tool, except it's not a select tool. It's just a draw whatever you want tool. See that? Just like that, like that. You know, and there you go. Once we make it, we can move it however we want. We can still edit the inside at any time. Come over here, give it a magenta stroke, how about that? And there you go. Now that's enough for this part. I am going to be splitting the acorn tutorials into many different parts, so don't you worry about that. In the next part, I'll probably be talking about layers, or maybe up here the brush, the pencil tool, or maybe text tool, something else. You know, just to keep explaining more about this. So, goodbye. Until next time.